We have all been there. You create a player, make them move, and you come to add sound, and what do you do? You create a separate audio source for every single sound. Then you go to your player movement script, and you get a reference to all those audio sources, and then you play audio source.play to trigger them in your script. Don't worry amigo, we've all been there. In this video, I will guide you through a script that I've been using for years to manage sound. How do you use it? If you want to play a sound in your script, simply call soundmanager.play and then pass through the sound and the volume you want it at. And that's it. Even better, you can attach the custom play sound enter and play sound exit scripts to your desired animation states. Now it will play the sound whenever the state is entered or exited. Let me show you an example scene. <coughs> The sound in the scene is not triggered by any code. They are all triggered by play sound enter and play sound exit scripts. By the end of the video, your sound manager will have an inspector that looks like this, with drop downs to all audio clips. Writing the sound manager script also takes hardly any coding. Your sound manager script will only be this size when completely finished. I will split this video into three sections. First, let's get the sound manager functionality going so we can start playing sounds. Then we'll make the animator scripts, play sound enter and play sound exit and at the very end i'll go through some extra functionality to create a simple inspector for it so i'm in the unity editor here and if i were to click play you can see that i've removed all the sounds and all the scripts so we can just start over and over here i'm using this lamp here as a light flicker it's actually one of my new assets called light flicker ultimate and you can see i'm using four light states here I'm using an on state, an off state, an on state, and an off state. And the first two are long states, and the last two I've set to really short states. So that's why you see it on for a long period of time, and then it flickers on and off. Sweet, so what's the very first thing we'll do? Well, we'll create the sound manager script. And the next thing is I want to make a static reference to the sound manager so that we can call it from anywhere. Sweet, so now I've got the static instance. And what is the main method we'll add? Well, it is the play sound method. And I'm going to make this public and static. So with this method, what do we want to pass through? Well, the very first thing is you want to pass through the type of sound we want to play and also the volume that we want to play it at. So let's tackle these one at a time. So what sound we want to play through? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here and I'm going to create an E number. And in this enum, I'm going to add all the different sounds that I have. Sweet, so now I have this enum, I'm going to pass through one of these enum values. And when I'm going to go to the volume, I'm just going to preset it to 1. So that is always at max volume. So the next thing is we need to make a reference to an audio source. We want to ensure that the sound manager always has an audio source component on it. So up here, I'm going to go require component. And what is the type? Well, we want to add the audio source onto it. Now that we've got our audio source, we need to pass through the clips that we want to play. So we're going to pass those clips through in the inspector. So now we have the audio source we want to play and we've got the audio clip array. So down here in play sound, I'm going to play them. So first I need to get the audio source, but because this method is static and audio source is not static, I need to first get the instance and then I can get the audio source and I'm going to go play one shot. So what play one shot does is it gets the current settings of the audio source and it plays a one shot audio clip and it does not fill in the audio clip space here. It just plays it once and that's it. So when we play one shot, what do we pass through? Well, we pass through the clip that we want to play and here we have our audio clip array. So I'm gonna go instance dot sound list and then what element of the sound list do we want to get? It would be the index of the current enum. So I'm going to get the sound and then I'm going to convert that to an integer. And then as my second parameter of play one shot, I'm going to pass through the volume that we want to play it at. So if we go back to our inspector here, you can see that I've got our sound list and I can add more elements to them. So just to demo this out, I'm going to drag in all the audio clips that I need and I'm going to match them 
to the sound type E num here. So sword will be the first one, then it's magic, then it's land, then it's jump. All right, so I've added all my sound effects in here, making sure that it matches the E num exactly. And we'll go to this issue later on in the video, don't worry. So now to try this out, I'm going to go to our player movement script. And what should I test out? Okay, I've got the check attack method here. So I'm going to go if it was successful in attacking, then I want to go sound manager dot play sound. And what sound do I want to play? Well, I want to play the sword sound and I'm going to keep the volume at 100%. So I'm going to click play and let's try this out. If I click shift, and there we go, now it plays the sword sound. Next, I want to make the sounds play whenever a state is entered or exited. So let's say on the hit animation here, I'm going to add a behavior called play sound enter. So whenever you enter the hit state here, I want it to play a sound. So I'm going to delete all this because all I am concerned about is the on state enter method here. So what are the things we'd want to pass through? Well, first of all, we want to be able to select in the inspector what sound we want to play. So I'm going to put the enum here and I'm going to call it sound. And we also want to pass through the volume which we want to play the sound at. And I'm going to preset this to B1. And also the volume can only ever be between 0 and 1. So I'm going to add a range here between 0 and 1. So now when you enter the state, all I'm going to do is go sound manager. Uh, and I'm going to play the sound that will select in the inspector and at the certain volume. So when I go back to the inspector, you can see I can now select what sound to play and also the volume that we want to play it at. And the last one I'm going to add is play sound exit. And this is important for like the fall animation here, because as we are falling, it will transition to another animation the moment we hit the ground. So I'm going to go play sound exit. And this here is going to be the exact same as play sound enter, except I'm going to change on state enter to on state exit. All right, so let's give this a go. On the hit, I'm going to make it so it makes the hurt sound whenever you get hit. So when I click play, you can see that whenever I get hit, it plays the hurt sound. And if I were to go to full and I were to add the play sound exit script that we just made, and I'm going to go land and if i were to click play you can see that whenever i land and it exits the state it will play the land sound effect so i'm going to go through the player animator and the wizard animator and i'm going to add all these scripts to them i'll also note that you can play multiple sounds so when i play the attack animation i'll play the sword sound effect and i'll also play the oh i don't have attack there i'll add that in okay let's try again i'm going to select that and also the attack sound there so I've added all the sounds, but I'll click play, and next thing I can get hit, I can swing, I can hit the grant sound effect, and then I can hit the range, and they will also get hit as well. Now there's one thing missing, and that is footsteps. So how do we add footsteps? So it's quite simple, if I were to go to my play here, and let's open up the animations panel, uh, and let's go to the run animation. You can see I've already added two events here and you can add an event by clicking this event button. And on this event, I want to play a sound. And you can see that I've timed these events so it's when the player steps. So how do these events work? Well, if I go up to the function here, uh, you can actually select a method to play that's on the current mono behavior. So if I were to go to my player, you can see I've got the play footstep script here and let's edit it. And I've actually done it already. Uh, it has one method called play sound and it simply plays the sound of footstep. So I've done it for the player and I've also done it for the wizard as well. So if we go here, the wizard plays it at the very start. So let's click play. And if I start running, you can see it plays the footstep sound and the wizard should also play the footstep sound as well. All right, so we got our system in place, however, I've only got one audio clip for each type of sound. And let's try to add lots of sounds for each of these. So like when you swing with your sword, we can add like four sound effects there and it'll pick a random one. And also the inspector, you can see it goes element zero, element one, element two. And that's really annoying because you don't know which one it is, which ones you're dragging it to. So we're also going to change that. So we need to go back to our sound manager and make the audio clips multidimensional. So we have the list of sounds and then in those sounds, it'll pick a random sound to play. And we're just going to comment this out. But if we go back, you can see the Unity Expector doesn't like that. It doesn't like multidimensional arrays. So how do we go around this? 
Well, what we're going to do is we're going to create a struct and then we're going to make an array of that struct, but the struct itself contains an array. So that's how we can get around it. So what do we do? Well, let's create a struct and in the struct, I'm going to create a audio clip array. And then up here, instead of making, you know, this standard audio clip array, I'm going to change this to become a sound list array. So now we have an array of a struct that also contains an array. Now this won't work initially because we need to serialize the struct. So up here, I'm going to go using system and then above the struct, I am going to make this serializable. So let's give this another go. And there it is, we've got our sound list there. If I were to click plus, you can see I've got element zero, element one, element two, and then inside each of these, I've also got an array. So this is crucial because element zero, let's make it our sword sound effect. Well, now we can add four or like five or six different sounds just for our sword sound effect. Now, the only problem with this is we've got element zero, element one, element two. How do we change this to be the names of our sounds? Well, I'll show you a little tip. I'm going to create another variable and I'm going to make it a string. So when you make a string at the top of a struct or something that's chosen in the inspector, it'll actually change the element to that name. So let's go back and I'll go down. You can see I've got our audio clip array. And now here I'm going to change the name and it actually changes the name up here. So I can name the sword and it will change it to sword. But that's quite tedious of having to manually do it each time. So we're going to do this in code. First of all, I am going to hide this in the inspector and I'm going to make this public so then we can change it. Next, when the script gets enabled, I want to go through each of the sound list elements and I want to change the name of them to the name of the enums here. So how do we do that? First of all, I want the script to execute in edit mode. So I'm gonna put that up here. And then down here, I'm going to do the on enable script. And I'll also only want this to execute if you are currently in the Unity editor. All right, what's the first thing we need to do? Well, we need to first get all the names in the enum. So I'm going to make a string array and I'm going to call it names. And what we're trying to get, well, we're trying to get enum dot get names and this here returns a string and what enum do we want to get the names of well let's go type of and the sound type so now with this array at element zero it will be the string sword and at element one it will be the string magic so the next thing is we want to resize the length of the sound list array to be the exact size as this enum here so to do this i'm going to go array dot resize and i'm going to pass through the array that we want to resize and what is that is the sound list array and what is the length we want to set it to we want to set it to the length of the names array because that is the amount of elements in this enum so now we've got all the names and we've resized the array we want to go through each of the elements of sound list and we want to change the name of them to be the name of the sound type so let's go for and what is the length well we want to set it to the length of the sound list and what do we want to do well, we want to get the sound list elements so the sound list element at i we want to get the name of it and we want to set that to be the name of the enum and remember that's the name here and actually that's all we need to do if I were to go back to the Unity Editor. And just like that is automatically set all of these to be the enums. And you can see the size is the exact size. And then let's just like remove the sound manager and let's reload it. Where you can see automatically it just adds all the sounds that we need. And yeah, I'm going to start adding all the sounds in. All right, so now I've added all the sounds in. I've got like four sword sounds, four magic sounds, a land sound, a jump sound, uh, lots of hurt sounds. So now I've got these in, we just need to play them. Now under the play sound method, we're going to play a random clip from these sounds. So first I want to get an array of the clips that we want to play a random sound from. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get into this sound list and I am going to get this audio clip array here. And at what element in the sound list do we want? Well, we're passing through this enum. So again, I'm going to cast it to an int and I'm going to make that the element there. 
And then what do I want to get? Well, I want to get the sounds, but currently it's private, so I can't get it. So I'm just going to add a getter here. Sweet, so now when I call sounds, then it will return the sound array. So now I'll up here, I'm just going to go dot sounds. And now we want to get a random audio clip. So I'm going to go audio clip, random clip. And we want to get a random clip from this clips array. So the element I want to get it at is going to be a random element. And the element is going to be between zero and the length of the clips. So, right, so now we have our random clip. Now we just need to play it and we'll do the same thing as last time. So, right, so when we play the sound, we are playing a random clip from the clip that we are currently looking at. So, right, so if I start playing the game, you can see that each sound is very different from each other. And that's because it picks a random sound from the list that we give it. So there we go, that's how you create a sound manager in Unity. And I'll put this script in the description as well.